uh, with a presentation uh, this evening. Number one, thanks for coming out tonight, everybody. Um, this is the second public information meeting for the County Truck Highway EM Improvement Project. With us today is Clement Abangua, the Highway Division Director for Kenosha County. Kwame oh Amagashan uh, <laughs> with Kenosha County. Eric LaFond, uh, Project uh, Construction Manager. Myself, Len Recker, a project uh, consultant, and Robert Wielgos. So I'm going to let Clement say a few words and then we'll get on. Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you for coming again. And uh, I just wanted to know that, that uh, it's how the project, the product of the project, depends significantly on what you tell us so that we try as much as possible to accommodate as much as we can. Having said that, before I leave them do their presentation, I just want to recognize some um, uh, very dignitaries in, the, in, in our presence. I will start with, first of all, thanking uh, uh, <laughs> this village president, uh, Howard, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for allowing us to use, use your, your facility. We really appreciate it. They've been very, very, very helpful, and they've been making sure that uh, we get to new people and make sure we get everything as as much as possible to make sure that everybody benefits from the project. So thank you so much. And then I would like to introduce, oh not introduce, or oh, welcome uh, uh, Supervisor Carol. Um, and he says they say supervisor very supportive and always innovative and trying to make sure that we use the best product and get a good return for the for the taxpayers fund so thank you for always being there for us we call him all the time and he's he's always been there for us so thank you so much and last but not the least no sorry before i continue uh, laura uh, <laughs> is the village uh, administrator and uh, thank you for always accommodating us uh, we ap appreciate that uh, i didn't want to just go and close without you coming and and also some of the, 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 the village consultants who have been helping us. And then uh, Supervisor Nodigan, uh, is the, is the, um, I wanted to keep him at the last because he's our main uh, he's our chairman for our public works uh, committee and <coughs> attends nearly all of our public works and make sure that we get, most important, we get what we can do, we get what we need to make sure that we achieve what you guys are requiring. And I just, I can't thank you enough. I mean, I've said this so many times and whenever I see him, I'm always comfortable because I know he's there to support us. Not only the, the county staff, but the public as well. So um, without further ado, I would just say. Oh, yes. oh. oh, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. So, yeah, so thank you for coming and uh, thank you for the support uh, for the, all the work you guys do, especially at the meeting to support the project and encourage us to continue with the project. Thank you so much. Um, I hope there's no other <laughs> Without further ado, uh, I'll, I'll hand it over to uh, Len Reka, who is the main design consultant for our, for our project. So. Uh, yeah, you can take on in. Okay, thank you, Clement. Mm -hmm. um, just want to give a brief overview of like I, like I would like to accomplish tonight. Um, want to give everybody kind of a feel of where we've been, where we're going, the schedule. Um, have some questions and answers. Hopefully, we've got a lot of representatives here that hopefully can provide uh, meaningful answers to your questions. Um, I kind of view these projects sometimes as similar to making sausage. Sometimes the process is a little messy, but at the end it tastes really good. So hopefully we'll use that as a backdrop. But uh, again, thanks for coming out tonight. Um, as you know, this County Highway EM project is a 2.6 mile long project extending from the state line on the south, going northeasterly up to Highway Z. Um, and it's a long and twisty and curvy route, as you all know. 
It's a 25 mile an hour roadway. It's intended to be traversed at lower speeds. We all know that people sometimes don't drive at that speed. Um, but the way it is today, there's two travel lanes and there's no room really for anything else. And so uh, one of the goals of this project was to try to provide some additional space outside the travel lanes for uh, what we call a paved shoulder. Uh, if residents and people use that area outside the travel lane for walking or, or getting along uh, this route, um, it should lend itself as a much safer space than being in the actual roadway that we all know uh, we see and have seen for decades out there. And so um, that's one of the primary goals of the project. Um, I think as a uh, designer, uh, one of the things that we are tasked with is trying to find a project that um, wasn't overly intrusive on all the private property and yet still tried to accomplish the goal of creating additional space, making the drainage better in many, place, in many cases, and at the end cleaning up some of the water that ends up in the lakes uh, along the route. And so um, with that being said, it's been about a year, year and a half long journey to where we're at today. Um, a construction contract's been let. Uh, the prime contractor for the project is called Musson Brothers. And um, they're about to begin in about a week to week and a half. Uh, so uh, we're at the point where we're going down the road where things are gonna get messy and dirty for a while. And um, will there be some inconveniences and disruptions along the route? Absolutely. Um, those are necessary. When we gotta dig big holes with big machinery, Sometimes there's delays, sometimes there's inconveniences, but uh, again, when we're all done, hopefully it's a product that everybody can be happy with. Um, it's a little over a $4 million effort. It's been a collaboration of village and county, uh, financial support, state support, uh, and so uh, there's been many people that have been contributing in many ways the constituents and the residents of the community as well. Um, you know, uh, we worked with a lot of you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, there's been uh, phone calls, there's been site meetings uh, to try to, again, arrive at the point we're at today. So, where are we going from here? Um, we're gonna start this project, hopefully weather permitting, uh, in the next week or two. Um, there's been utility relocation going on in this corridor for about a month or so now. Um, we Energy's gas is in there putting a new gas main through the whole corridor. They then have to tie in all the side streets and then they have to cut all the services for the new gas main from the old gas main to the new gas main. That takes some time. Um, as much as we had hoped they'd be done and out of here, they're not. And so we're going to be working and coexisting with the utility companies out there, uh, getting this project done. The goal is March, April, May, and into June, and we hope that we're at a point where somewhere in June we're completed. Uh, it's a very aggressive timetable to try to get this amount of work done in. Um, so um, weather is a huge factor, and hopefully we have a decent spring. Um, if it snows and is rainy and icy every other day, that complicates things and can cause a delay. So uh, we'll do the best we can. Uh, we'll try to keep um, the project site uh, as tidy as we can. Uh, there's erosion control measures throughout the project to make sure that we try to protect the lake environment and we keep sediments off the road to the extent we can. Um, and it's um, one of those things for Traffic control, um, the road will be closed other than local access only. What that means, hopefully, is that the Mark Detour route around this is utilized by a lot of the people that maybe don't have to go down Lakeshore Drive because they don't live or have a reason to be on there, but um, they can get around to where they gotta go in the village or elsewhere in the county. Um, slightly to the east, there is a marked detour route that will be set up. And if you uh, live uh, with one of the properties or have a business in and along Lakeshore Drive or have uh, subdivision roads that are dependent on it, um, you will have access to get in. Um, there'll be flaggers in many cases where you may have to stop and wait. Um, I would urge everybody if you're planning you know, your day-to-day -day stuff, um, there may be some delays. So try to plan ahead, try to uh, anticipate that there could be some de delays. Um, it's a very tight corridor. 
Some of the pipes that we're putting in out there are on the order of 15 feet deep and they're six foot in diameter. So uh, large equipment, large uh, materials out there that have to go on the ground. The good thing is once they're in, they can cover them up and uh, at the end of each night, we should have any major holes closed up so that there's not hazards in the night uh, for people. Um, so uh, again, I ask for everybody's patience and tolerance because that's the key to making the project safe and successful. And um, if we have people that get irritated and act irrationally, it doesn't help anybody. And so hopefully um, we have a good um, understanding um, base of people that uh, are going to work with us and um, our construction team Eric LaFond will be the primary construction manager out on the site we'll have other representatives out there as needed there was a sheet when you came in with the general information Eric's cell phone's on there he may not get any sleep between now and June I don't know but um, you know you've got his number uh, Kwame the project manager from the county's uh, contact number is also on there um, between those two as primary contacts and all of us as secondary contacts, uh, we'll try to tackle whatever comes up day to day. Um, if there's concerns by residents or others, uh, we'll try to address that to keep things moving because every day is important uh, from now until June. Um, we've coordinated with uh, the school district and busing, we've coordinated with the postmaster on mailboxes. Um, the contractor may choose to move some mailboxes and create temporary banks of mailboxes at key points along the route. Um, if that is the case, we'll, uh, you know, you'll know because your, your mailbox will be somewhere else, but... Um, <laughs> How far away is something else? Well, you, you know, um, we're going to look at what some logical uh, increments are for these banks. Usually they can do anywhere from 15 to 20 mailboxes at a crack, and we'll try to put those incrementally. Can a mile away and I'm looking for my mailbox? We'll, we'll try not to make it a mile away. It might be a quarter to a half mile away, but, um, you know, uh, we understand that the proximity is important and everybody relies on the mail, everybody relies on Amazon, everybody relies on you know garbage trucks. Fire and EMS, police, very important. Um, one lane of travel will be open at all times and that means that there's um, flaggers out there um, and that will allow people to get timely response when needed. If there's an incident, you gotta get the ambulance there. Um, the construction company knows that and uh, they recognize that, you know, during an emergency situation, you got to do whatever it takes to get that person to where they got to be in a hurry. So, um, you know, but fire, police, EMS, they're all aware of this project. So they're, you know, they know uh, that, um, you know, depending where the call is, they might be able to come in a different way so they don't have to traverse the whole route. Um, so, um, uh, there'll be some initial tree clearing out there. Um, not a lot. Um, it's kind of selective tree clearing just where we need to take some trees that are in the counties right away, uh, not on private property to do the improvements. Um, Eric was out there marking some of the trees today. You may see that as soon as next week or the following week, so where some of those trees will come down. Um, there's um, areas uh, on the one curve uh, just west of Matthew, I think there. Uh, we'll be cutting down that hill somewhat and creating some additional space. Great idea that was brought forth from the village, uh, was able to be integrated in the project. Um, you know, after all of the underground storm sewer and drainage work is done, then we'll get into the paving portion and road building part of it. And that's probably going to be May, early June by the time we get to that. But uh, there's quite a bit of March and April work where we're going to be digging a lot of holes and uh, um, creating drainage systems and things like that. So. Um, as far as um, you know, other things go, um, the county, uh, everybody involved with the project is committed to trying to get this thing done before your busy summer season gets here. Um, with a little help from Mother Nature, I think we can do it. Um, but uh, we're here to answer any questions that you have. So I guess at this point, if, we, if you want to raise your hand and ask a question, we'll try to answer it. Um, and if, if you want to come up one-on-one -on -one between now and uh, around 6.15, um, we're here to, to answer any of your questions. So uh, with that, the um, floor is open. Yes, sir. What, where are you starting? South or north? 
That's uh, right now a little bit of an unknown. The gas company has completed a lot of their work on the north end of the project, probably the north mile or so, and they're focusing their work now toward the south end. Um, so um, as far as where the contractor's gonna start, the, what they call means and methods, we leave that kind of up to him. Uh, he may have multiple crews in there where they're working in numerous different locations at any given time. So hopefully that answers your question. Yes, sir. What are the hours that they're actually going to be working? We have hours from 7 a.m., not before 7 a.m., for you that don't want to get up that early. Uh, and typically, we allow them to work to either 5 p.m. In some cases, as the more daylight comes in here, uh, they may work even later than that, but probably no later than 7 p.m. Len, uh, Erlene had a question. Yes. Well, I just wonder when they were replacing the gas line, are they putting in a larger gas line? Or? Yeah, I believe the gas line that uh, We Energies is currently putting in is slightly larger than what's there, and that's to feed a lot of the side streets and the development that's happened over time along there. Uh, someone else had a question? Yes. Will it always be one lane even when they're not working? Yes, the, the goal is at the end of each night to try to have both lanes open, obviously, because we won't have flaggers out there at night. And so a lot of the holes they dig during the day, they'll try to get covered up and their equipment off to the side so that you can pass. But again, it is a construction zone. Caution for everybody driving through the zone. And um, the road should be, or the road is closed. So, you know, if you don't have a purpose to be on Lakeshore Drive, you probably shouldn't be. Yes, sir. With all this road work being done and the road being widened, it sounds like it's going to be a nice path better to go down. Uh, what about for speeding? Like, is anything going to be done for speeding? You acknowledge right at the beginning that a lot of people don't always go the speed limit down the road. Yeah. Are you guys putting any new measures in? Any of those uh, signs that show your speed as you're driving by, the electronic signs? Yeah, things like that. I, I think uh, a couple of things on that. Uh, from the engineering side, we can create all kinds of things. Um, the topography is what it is out there. The speed limit's always been 25. It'll remain 25. Will people want to drive faster because it's newer, smoother? Probably. Um, we talked about that at the first public information back in June. Um, can there be things done at the village or county level to help uh, abate speeding or? Uh, create enforcement out there, speed uh, awareness signs. Um, some of those tools yeah, can be implemented when the project's done. I think one of the other things that uh, was a concern voiced by some residents is once we have these widened shoulder areas, what's gonna prevent people from parking all along there because it looks like a great place to park. And um, I believe the county has a policy of no parking all along we don't, there. We don't, have, no, we don't have a policy of no parking, however, <laughs> If the if the village wants no parking to be implemented and or enforced at that location, then we work with the village to make sure that uh, we, the no parking is prevented at that situation. The reason being that you don't want to just do no parking and it's it's actually detrimental to the village. We have to make sure that the village understands that oh yes. We don't want no parking here. And usually that request comes from the village and then we grant them the request and then they go ahead and put the signs and then they enforce the signs so that they they can determine when to take them down or when to leave them there. Yeah. yeah so we worked with the village on that and the village actually mentioned that they wanted signs out there so we put that in the, in the project. So it's gonna be no parking signs out there. Um, and then uh, in terms of speeding, we, we've thought about that. Um, one of the things we're going to be doing, we're going to try to make the lanes a little bit narrower uh, to give the impression that it's tight. And again, it's, it's going to minimize it, but is it going to eliminate it? Uh, it's, it's, can, it can you guys consider those, those signs that are attached to the actual speed limit sign to show your speed as you're trying? It seems like that's effective in, in other areas. It doesn't seem like it's a... It's, yeah, you're right, and our experience has been that it's effective for the first six months. And then after that they get used to it and then they, they just ignore it. 
Um, but again, it's it, 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 we, something we should look at it, turn them on at certain times and then turn them off, maybe. Yeah, but uh, it's very effective the first six months. Uh, usually the people who speed are actually the people who live in the area. Because they know, they, know the, they know exactly where all the potholes are, so they're comfortable, <laughs> and so they go faster. So you put, this, you put that sign, so they, they, they see it the first few times, they get nervous, and then after six months, they say, oh, it's been there for six months, I've not seen anything happen, then they, pff, they go. But again, and they those, those are things that could be considered. Again, we'll look into the, all of those things detailly, and as I promised the village that after the end of the project, we're going to look into other ways of calming traffic. Um, right now, I don't know, but uh, I'm going to do my best to look for other ways that we can calm, calm down traffic. Yes, sir. A question for Len. Should we assume this will be a four-month project? That's a good assumption. <laughs> March, April, May, and June, again, um, weather, um, weather other, other, yeah. other factors can play into that. And what we'll try to do is keep everybody apprised as it goes along. But um, I think, you know, the contractor is the type of contractor that has the wherewithal to get a lot of people and get things done. Um, and, you know, we'd all like this compressed as much as possible so that the, most of the summer can be enjoyed without construction. The village, I think, early on in the project uh, acknowledged that they'd really like this to be on the front end of 2023 construction season and not go too far into the summer because it's, it's a very busy area, as you know. So hopefully that answers your question. I can't guarantee anything. Yes, sir. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I just had a, a concern comment. You said something about you were going to narrow the lanes a little. I thought part of the project was to make it a little wider. And and um, so how narrow are you thinking? No, just like six inches. Six, narrower than it is now. The, the, well, the, now right. it's now it's twelve inches. No, no, no. Right, right now the travel lanes are about ten and a half feet in width, and by virtue of a constrained driving lane at 25 miles an hour, it causes the driver to mentally use a degree of caution. If we were to widen those lanes to 11 or 12 feet in width and make it a wider travel lane, people are gonna to wanna to go faster because they have more room. And so by creating a constrained environment for the travel, vehicle travel lanes, the additional wide and shoulder areas are outside a painted line, you're not supposed to be over there. And so um, that's one of the calming elements that's been used on a lot of urban and semi-urban areas that's been helpful is you want, you want to give the driver the idea that this isn't a raceway, this is confined, you got to really watch what you're doing to stay between the lines. So okay, it's I, 10 and a half feet now. I'm no, no, you're correct. Thank you. It remind you, I recall what I said at the beginning. Excellent. We're going to maintain okay. what is there, which is only 10 feet, because generally we go 12 feet. Okay. 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 okay, 10 and a half feet. Okay, thank you for the correction. Okay, so, um, I've been away from this product in a while, so my, my mind is a little bit rusty. But we're going to maintain the 10 and a half feet that is there, because if you're widening it, then they have enough room, they feel comfortable to drive faster. Then when they have the 10 feet, it kind of, some of people will calm down, not all, but it will reduce some of the speeding that's going on. I was just concerned you were going to make it smaller than it already is. No, no. <laughs> yes, sir. You mentioned earlier that the gas um, is already behind schedule. Has that affected your start date at all today? Um, we're going to have that conversation. We're going to have that conversation with a contractor. Um, you know, the, the goal is they're both going to have to coexist in the corridor for a while. I think the gas company may see some benefits once the roads officially close next week because you have less traffic to deal with. And so that should allow them to move up their schedule. Um, I think they're probably going to be in there with all their tie-ins and cutovers probably into late May, the gas company. And, and the other question I had was, is the road still going to be plowable in terms of the payment between now and say the first 10 days of April, which is kind of the yeah, we recognize that we have snow and ice control that has to happen no matter what while we're doing this March, April. Hopefully it's not snowing in May, but um, yeah, so, you know, the county plows, the contractor will keep the road as open as possible, you know, salted, things like that, um, you know, but will it be perfect like some of the other county highways? Absolutely not, you know. Yes. Do you have an actual uh, planned close, closure date to start a bit? 
More than likely next Wednesday. Okay, we're not, we don't have that zeroed in yet? No, okay. more than likely, yeah. yeah. Yes, in the back, I'm sorry. I live in Edgewater Park, and we have a private roads like that. You can sneak through those roads to get to Lakeshore Drive. Is there a sign going to be put up there saying that we do not use this, or? Yeah. Um, as with projects like this, the locals, if you will, typically understand where the shortcuts are and the bypasses are. And um, typically under our road closure program, we'll have road close at all those roads that can get somewhere else, you know, to keep people from cutting through there. Um, you know, so um, we have people that move barricades and do other things and um, it's a daily chore. You know, it's a daily chore to keep the traffic control as tight as we can. Um, I think our experience is usually after the first week or two when travelers recognize there's delays, there's inconveniences, they choose another route a lot of times. Um, but yeah, that's always a concern is some cut through traffic and things like that. Yes? When the project's finished, um, is there gonna be anything put out as far as the village is concerned about people not using the walking path, but continuing to stay in the street? You know, they're going from driveway to driveway, and oh, this is kind of a pain. And uh, you know, now they're out on the road. I mean, there's no question, there's a lot of baby buggy traffic and bikes, and it goes on all summer. Yeah. But what if people aren't using the walking path? You know, I think if, if we create the space and they don't use it and they choose to walk in the traffic lane, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if there is, you know, um, anything the village can do in a newsletter to acknowledge that they're not using the area that's now available they're using the traveling you know i, I think most people are gonna if it's there they're gonna be not want to be in traffic they're going to be off to the side so hopefully hopefully it's not a problem what about snow removal right now the ordinance in town is you have to shovel what's in front of your house your sidewalks mm -hmm. so who, who's shoveling this well, I believe you're going to continue to plow, right? Yeah, you see, they keep calling it trail. It's really not a trail. It's just a, an extended shoulder. paved shoulder. Mm -hmm. So that is our responsibility to so plow. where's that snow going to go, though, if, if it's supposed to be a walking path? You know, where's the snow from the street going to Will the plows push it off, off the path and the road? Yes. 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 So the wide shoulder and the travel lanes, the snow will be cleared from that, right? The, the paved areas. With the, with the village plows. With the county plows. Because you, you plow, right? I think so, yeah. yeah. And if it's not, we as homeowners are not going to be responsible, because I don't have a sidewalk in front of my house right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. I'm in a Milwaukee panel out there. Yeah. So, you will not be responsible. No. Yeah. Okay. And so it's a, it's a county roadway and shoulder. Okay. We got about 15 minutes left. Uh, any other questions? Feel free to come on up, ask a question. If you've read the newspaper, we all know that we're getting fiber optics out here. Okay. So my theory is you guys are doing all this work. Fiber optic comes through. Are they tearing up the road to lay it? No, yeah, typically, typically not. You know, uh, most of the broadband and other connectivity communications that are being retrofitted into areas such as this uh, is often a directionally board where they can do it without tearing up pavements and things like that. Uh, Clement's office issues any permit for any work in this corridor, and typically he's really good about not letting them cut into new pavements. Well, you know, yes. that's just my first thought is we just put this brand new pavement, mm -hmm. and three months down the road, they're tearing up the road to put stuff in. Yeah, no, we we will not allow them to cut the road. Okay. <laughs> so I'm glad she brought that up because we currently, this company is just come into the village and I think they're working out by Fairway Woods right now. So can we make a contact to them, say, look, this is going on now. If you have plans for Lakeshore Drive, now's your time. Yeah, it's, I would say it's a little bit late now already. Pardon? It's already a bit late because usually they'll have their design and then we review their design and then we approve them before we give them permit. Uh, but I think it's worthwhile we just let them sure. know yeah, um, we, usually in this kind of situation what happens is that they 
they have to locate their, their facilities within the right of way outside the pavement. That's what we typically tell them. Right. And if they, if, if they can't locate it, then they'll have to acquire easement from the neighboring property to, to, uh, to do their work. Yes. Yeah. So, what would you say in that? It has to be within the right way, but outside the pavement, mm -hmm. and that's what we're not going to have. Yeah, so if we don't have enough room within outside the right the pavement, then they'll be obliged to get east from the right, private so property. This will be over to yes. But if, Howard, if you or someone on the village staff has that broadband company or whatever it is, we'll, we'll make sure that they're aware of it. Yeah, okay. yeah we'll contact them. I think we should. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, two questions. One, would not be a good time for like underground electrical service to happen? Yeah, um, about a year ago, we had that conversation with Alliant, uh, the local power provider, and um, their general response is that, um, you know, they didn't see that they had any initiatives or plans to bury electrical lines in this corridor. I mean, their utility company, the county doesn't really have any say over what they do or don't do, but um, I know just uh, from my experience that, you know, underground buried electric is about 10 times the cost of overhead. So um, it's, it's a pricey endeavor for the utility companies to do that. Um, they do it in new subdivisions because they're just going in there. But older areas where you have a lot of power poles and stuff like that, it's, it's a tough, uh, tough conversion from overhead to underground. So, but yeah, that was made early on and they chose not to. And then the second question is that I do live on Lakeshore Drive. Mm -hmm. And um, today, for example, I don't know what the side street is. I've been here for a long time. But in any event, the first curve that you made going south from the school all the way up until the stop sign of where you head off to the west, they only had, they didn't have any flaggers. Is there a way that I can get out of my driveway safely? For the gas company that was working out there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and a couple other residents uh, that were here earlier had mentioned the same thing where um, it seems as though they had flaggers literally on each end of the project and everybody that lived in the middle had no idea what was going on in between the flaggers. And so um, with the gas type of work, uh, they're often doing long bores that are somewhere between 500 feet, 1,000 feet in length. And, um, you know, that's an issue that they're operating in the county uh, with a permit from the county and we can have them pay better attention to uh, better flagging. Uh, we'll, we'll follow up with them and, and require them to get more flaggers in between those flaggers at the end of the projects and see maybe that might in, improve the, uh, the drive through the work zone. And again, I think once we close the road officially, hopefully next week, that's going to reduce the amount of traffic on the road. Other questions? Okay. I have one more. Yes. I'm sorry. So when you say they're closing the road, like I'm a half mile down from the north end okay. of the school. So are you, are you guys going to close the whole road down all at once? Or Correct. Do like half of it, so. No, there'll be the whole thing uh, from end to end, and that's typically the type three barricades, road closed, local traffic only. And what that local traffic only does is it also gives the enforcement tools to the local enforcement police or sheriff that uh, if somebody's in that corridor and they don't have a valid reason for it, they can issue a citation. You know, obviously, if you live along there, you have a valid reason to have to go into the construction zone. Yes. Just looking forward into the springtime, the way they put up those barricades, we might want to make a little bit wider entrances for people pulling boats or seasonal things out because you could make that where a car or truck could get through it, but then a trailer couldn't right. make it. And then a guy's stuck with, how do I back down the hill? How do I get out of here? Yeah. It could get problematic. Yeah, no, I thank you for bringing that up. I know, um, you know, with some of the seasonal activities with some of the lake properties and that, there's a lot of uh, activity in April, May. And um, so um, we can make a point of that to make sure that our serpentine, you know, type of thing is wide enough to facilitate trailers. Yes, Supervisor. Um, uh, do we have any businesses we have to put signage up there for? I can't think of any, but there might be some small um, towns or legal or something. 
Not, not that I'm aware of. I don't think there's a bar on the south side, but that's the only business. Yeah, it is. It's a bar. It's a bar. It opens on April 1st. That will be in the middle of construction. Uh, we'll, so, yes, we'll, yeah, we'll take note of it. Usually, some auxiliary signage that you know, sandbar open. You know, it's 90 degrees if you come to the sandbar. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. You referred to like six foot pipes. I assume those are the storm drain. Some of the storm chambers, right, are of, of that size, right? Does that mean then you can control the storm drainage as it? Yeah, some of the features that were integrated in the project are what we call a stormwater treatment device, and it helps, it does two things, it helps slow the water as well as collect sediments before they end up in the lake. So there's seven locations, six, we're, six locations we're putting those in. Right. So those get cleaned out then over years, over time? Correct, yeah. Usually it'll take, you know, five to ten years for those sediments to build up there where it warrants to come in and remove that sediment and, um, keep the function of the device the way it should be. So who maintains that? The village? That'll be the village. Right, well, and then the other thing that's important to mention, how many new catch basins are there? 56. Right. 56. So where the water enters the system, the grate, there's a sump in the bottom of those catch basins. So those are the primary collector of the sediments right off the road. Mm -hmm. And then, so it's gonna prevent more of the heavy sediments from pulling into the into the chambers. Right. So it's not like a French drain. No. Okay. No. So, so the, 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 the inlets are going to get maintained probably more on an annual basis right. compared to the chambers. So the the project is a permitted project by the DNR. So there was a very extensive stormwater management plan that had to be submitted in order to get the permit to do the project. So the DNR has their blessing. We have the permit. So. So that's the other benefit, right, of the project is reduction of total suspended solids. Yep. Because of runoff water. Right. So the village can use that as part of their data for their annual reporting to DNR. Right, Greg? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys are not as lively. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, two more questions. Yeah. One, what are the specs on the uh, reconstruction as far as uh, landscaping goes? Do they, I mean, it's been my experience that Oftentimes they use inexpensive seed that creates nothing but weeds. Is there any, any specs in your country? Yeah, it, it, about it's what I would call um, you know, a field grade type of grass restoration in the right of way. You know, because the work is occurring within the right of way uh, versus out on a private property. But any of the edges of the roadway that are disturbed will be topsoil fertilized, seeded, and matted with an erosion mat. And in one case on the hill where we have a really steep slope, that's a special reinforced type of turf that we're going to use up there to make sure that that greens up. But um, the contractor basically is responsible for making sure that you don't just put the matting down and go away. You got to wait till it greens up and becomes healthy and growing. Okay. And then the second question is that, does any platform do it for like any street legal golf carts or? <coughs> That's not my department. <laughs> yeah, look at over there. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> how about chickens? Okay, now, now it's beginning to sound like the first meeting. <laughs> just quiet now. It's just some smiling in here. That's a good question. Yes. The county wants that road, so like if we had golf carts with blinkers and lights on and horn, or a UTV that's, uh, I guess it's a county road. Yes. And then it's the village. I mean, right now, who um, that? the county. The, the ATV, UTV flow is going to be forming. <laughs> <laughs> so, right now, right now, this, this, this stretch of uh, uh, county highway is a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit different because it's a 25 miles per hour road. But typically, we do not allow UTV because it's not safe. Well, and even with the topography, with the topography, and even we are still struggling to make room for people to walk. And having 10 and they have foot, a width of lane, 
Um, so I would say for now, uh, it's, we, we are still working on the fact that we have to be on the safe. We have to air more safety than just accept those. So for now, no. Yeah. Maybe the Polaris might be doing something else. Sounds like that's a separate issue. It definitely is. It's come up before. Okay. Anything else? Uh, we want to make sure that the board has time to get ready for their 6.30 meeting. But again, we got some time yet. If you, anyone wants to come up and has, ask a specific question about their address, or please feel free to. And again, thanks everybody for coming out tonight. Um, talk to Eric during construction. He'll be out there every day. And I'll talk to Kwame. <laughs> Thank you.